Climate is a balancing act. Carbon dioxide is emitted from the earth into the atmosphere by volcanoes or burning fossil fuels. In the natural system, there's a very fine balance between these emissions and the consumption of carbon dioxide via plants photosynthesizing and even weathering of rocks by natural acid rain. Rocks at the surface of the earth can tell geologists how Earth's temperature changes, but a lesser known fact is that the largest store of carbon on the planet is in rocks. At some point in Earth history, all of this carbon was once present as carbon dioxide. Here at Cambridge Earth Sciences, we aim to explain how carbon gets cycled between rocks and the atmosphere. Rivers are like the arteries of the planet, carrying this vital element. By studying rivers, we can better understand this part of the global carbon cycle and how it impacts Earth's climate. Working on the world's biggest rivers, which drain entire continents, we can understand how very large areas of the Earth's surface impact carbon cycling. In tropical Southeast Asia, with monsoonal climate, the carbon cycle is very active. However, there's very little research about carbon transport in this region. We are investigating these regions by collecting samples from the Irrawaddy and Salween rivers in Myanmar and the Mekong River, which runs through China, Laos, Cambodia and Vietnam into the ocean. We measure the flow of river water very precisely and collect water and sediment samples at different depths and multiple places along the river from mountain to ocean. This will tell us where exactly within the river basin the carbon comes from and how it changes as the water travels from the continental interior to the ocean. In the lab, many chemical analyses are needed to understand what types of rocks are weathering and how much carbon in the river came from plants, rocks and the atmosphere. We measure the isotope ratios of elements which tell us about the origin of the rocks, where the carbon came from and what happened to it during transport. For example, we perform radiocarbon analyses which tell us if the carbon in the river is ancient or freshly removed from the atmosphere. The natural system in these rivers is at a tipping point. So it's essential to research these rivers right now. Extensive dam construction is taking place across the region, which will result in dramatic changes to how the water and the sediment travel down the river. This in turn will have profound impacts on the people living downstream. So it's our last chance to capture a snapshot of these rivers in more or less their natural state before they're strongly altered by human engineering. This research will allow us to estimate the importance of riverborne carbon to the global carbon cycle. It will help us to understand in a fundamental way how the competing processes of the carbon cycle control the transfer of carbon from the atmosphere to rivers to oceans and back to rocks where it can be safely stored for a very long time. <laughs> <laughs>